Hello and welcome back to My Own Worst Enemy. We are going to start another operational sequence here in Coral Sea. So we will jump right into this. I'm gonna grab the Japanese player cards first to see what they might wanna do. Now we know that they still have this invasion force headed to Guadalcanal, so highly likely they wanna finish that up with a uh, an on-map operation. So let's see, actually, we are bringing supplies. There are two ships. Special naval forces on in each of those stacks. So we'll take a quick look to see. Now the Japanese do have supply. They've got this supply card and they've got this reinforcement card. They would love to get that out because they could start taking more operations, maybe go towards Port Moresby. This unit needs to move on across to finish taking uh, Bougainville. So they really, I think, yeah, I think they're gonna wanna go for an on-map operation. So they're gonna play the on-map operation chit, and now the allies, uh, looking at their cards, so we know they have two of these George C. Kenny related cards. You can't really do anything with these until this Kenny card comes out. So that's kind of off to the side. Then we have these other cards, this is a battle card. Uh, Henderson Field is gonna have to do with air attacks, and of course the Coast Watchers card will let them take the initiative here. And uh, hmm, they may want to consider, I'm pretty sure the Americans here or the allies want to take, I think they're also going to want to take an on-map operation. Now, I don't know if it's worth trying to seize the initiative here. It's, hmm, I'm going to say no. We're going to see, we're going to let the chips fall where they may. And let's see who's going to get, who's going to take the initiative. So if you remember, in order to see who has the initiative, we're going to roll 2d10. The Japanese will get to add plus two because they have the game initiative still. So let's go ahead and roll the 2d10. And the Japanese will get the initiative again. So that's twice in a row. The allies will not get to go this turn. So, or this operation, I should say. So let's go ahead and do the uh, on-map operation for the Japanese. And I think we're gonna go ahead and finish off this Guadalcanal invasion. So what we'll do, we'll have the Japanese spend this supply that's going to put the operation marker here and we'll get rid of the supply marker and then you'll remember that our supply points now are set to six. So we want to move this first stack with this landing force in it. So we're going to have to spend two of these supply points, so they'll take us down to four, to activate this stack and so we're going to move and I'll, let's see, the uh, movement factor on the ships are I think it's four, let me double check that. And, but I don't need to look it up, it's right there on the uh, lower right hand corner, it's six. They can move six, I'm gonna grab this D6 to um, keep track of how many points they've used. So they're gonna move, it's activated now, we're gonna move into the uh, Guadalcanal zone. That's gonna cost us one movement point. And then I'm just going to disembark this special naval landing force to the right side of Guadalcanal. Remember, we have to capture both sides. Now, now that we've disembarked this unit, I can have these ships move again if I want to. And I think I'm gonna leave them sit here. Now that's risky. Remember, you've gotta have supply points to move this stuff, and I, I don't have any more. I just spent this one. I'm gonna have to get more supply over there to conduct more actions. So I'm gonna say that's gonna be the movement for that stack. And now the same thing over here, this stack, I'm gonna spend two more supply to activate that stack. It's gonna move into the Guadalcanal zone with the uh, Special Naval Landing Force landing on the other side of Guadalcanal. Now that will actually flip Guadalcanal to Japanese control. So you look up here to your victory points and Guadalcanal will flip this from the Allies to the Japanese, so that flips. Guadalcanal is under Japanese control. And uh, this should have gone down to five, indicating that stack moved into the zone. Now I do wanna bring these ships back out, so they're gonna get to move five. One, two, three, four, five. So this will take them all the way back to Rabal. They are here. So it was one, 
two, three, four, five. Yes, so that's six total. They can't move anymore. So they're kind of hanging out here with this other LS ship. And I'm gonna keep those separate too, just for now. Because this stack has already moved. It cannot move again. But what I can do, no, I can't either. So remember that you have, I was gonna say I can move this other one back into port, but you have to spend your supply points from where you conducted your operation, your supply here. So this is where the, the um, supply indicator of the supply source, I'm calling it was, resource point, I believe is what it's called in the game. So, that, so the resource point I spent here, so this operation had to be conducted here. So only units that were within range of this could actually use the supply points that were provided. So I still have uh, two supply points remaining for that operation. Now it would be nice to use an action point, or I'm sorry, a supply point to move this unit over to the other unit here in Guadalcanal to stack them. But in the, after, since I've disembarked that unit this turn, then I can't activate that unit again to move. At least I think I'm reading that correctly in the rules that states that ground units that have disembarked from a naval area cannot be activated later during the same operation. So these supply points are just gonna go to waste. I, like I said, I could move these naval units out. I could actually move them forward, maybe over to this sea zone, but I'm gonna leave it there. And that is going to end the uh, operation for the Japanese. So this comes away. The Japanese operation is concluded. They now have Guadalcanal in their uh, victory point tally there. And like I said, the Allies, since they wanted to do an on-map operation, they do not get to do anything here. And so that's going to conclude the uh, operational sequence for this turn. And I'm still going to call these turns. I think of them as turns because it's basically each side has an opportunity to conduct either an on-map operation or a hard draw. And once each side has completed those opportunities, I'm thinking of that as one turn. So that's kind of why I'm calling those turns, even though I said earlier that there aren't really turns in this game. And so now we will start another operational sequence. So again, starting with the Japanese, I think they are definitely gonna want this time to, where did their marker go? They're gonna wanna play a card action here. And going back to the allies, so now, now that uh, the, well, I guess it doesn't matter. I was gonna say now that the card marker is out, then pretty much if the allies want to take an on-map action here, they can certainly do so. Now, if you're playing a two-player game, you wouldn't know what the Japanese player is gonna play, so you wouldn't know what to put down. That's kind of a, a neat little thing if you're actually playing this face-to-face -face with someone. And I do think, though, that the allies here probably do want to take a, well, let's see, how many units do they have? Actually. They don't have a lot of units down here. This is a problem for the allies. We might want to get rid of some of these cards to, uh, to try to get something better. So one thing the allies could do is actually take an on-map action to try to get some of these ships up here, maybe to take out that Japanese fleet. I really think we need more, well, let's see. We also have the units down here that I could also move. Fort Moresby here, we definitely have some units there, and I need to get these units forward from Australia. To transport those around and maybe unload them. But I think what we're going to do, well, I don't know, this is a tough decision. You know, I think we will take an on-map action. So we're gonna say that the allies will take an on-map action this turn. So when one player has an on-map action and one has the cards showing, the player who plays who played the uh, on-map action will get to go first. So in this case, the allies will get to go first. And I am gonna use up a uh, resource point here to conduct an operation. So we're gonna conduct an operation. This is from Australia. So we still have two remaining. And I am going to activate this ship and we're going to transport, let's see what we got in here, some units. I'm gonna transport, I can transport three of these units. So we're gonna transport three units and I'm gonna pull a resource marker with them. So you can transport, a ship can carry three ground units and one resource marker, one resource point marker. So we're gonna do that. 
that's going to leave behind one ground unit and one resource point, supply source, I call it. So we're going to, uh, we've spent that, so this goes to six to show we have six supply points. And I activate that ship and its units, and so that's going to use up two of these supply. And now we can move four. So it's going to be one, two to get us to this point, because remember Australia is actually two areas away. So it's going to be, uh, we'll show that we're down to two. We can, we can, we're, we started at four because we're transporting ground units. So this is going to come up to this area. And that's going to take two movements just to get there. And so we can still move two more. So I could go one, two, maybe try to come around this way. I could also go into Port Moresby and maybe unload these units into Port Moresby. We might want to do that. So let's do that. We're going to move them into here, taking us down now to one remaining movement. And now I can, let's see. So I think what I want to do is actually move into the port with all of these units. It's going to cost two more supply to do so. So that'll take us down to two. And that's going to move the, this stack now is also in Port Moresby, the port. So that's going to finish off that on map operation for the allies. And we will get rid of that marker. And then now the Japanese will play a card. And remember, they only get to play one card. Let's take a look here and see what cards they have. Now, it's going to be one of these two. Reinforcements or supply. And which one is more important at this point? I'm going to, look, we're going to put out this, this uh, supply card. So this card allows these three units to come out into Rabal. So the Japanese are going to play this card. And I'm going to grab the uh, Japanese markers and find those, the uh, ones that are, that are identified here. So we got to find these exact ones and we'll put them out in Rabal. All right, so I think I have them here. It, it is the, and the identifier is on, I think I showed this before, but I'll show it again. The identifier there is in the middle and it's on the left side. So 41, 141, and the 15th engineering are the three counters that I have pulled. So we simply take those, this card gets discarded, and we place these three units now go into Rabal. That's going to give the Japanese more units to play with. Now, unfortunately, they can only spend one card action. You can either draw a card, use a card, or discard a card. So that's going to be the Japanese. That's going to be what they do in this uh, operational segment here. So that's going to end yet one more operational segment or operational sequence, I should say. So we're going to start now another operational sequence, starting with the Japanese. Do they want to take an on-map action or do they want to play a card? I'm going to say they're going to play a card again. So they're going to put out their card marker. The allies. I'm going to have the allies. Hmm. I'm going to discard this air transport card. So that's going to be, well, I'm not actually going to do it, but what I'm going to do is take a, I'm going to take a card action with the allies is what I'm saying. But I do want to get rid of that card. The allies need to get more cards in their hand or different cards. What's going to happen now, this operational sequence, the player with the initiative will go first. It's the Japanese. They're going to play another card. And they're going to play this supply card to get three resource points at Rabal. So they spend the card, discard it, and now they're going to get... And we'll just take these that were off to the side. They're going to get three supply and we will place those in Rabal. So now the Japanese are looking pretty good to conduct, conduct some more operations. So now they've played their, uh, their operation, their card action. Now we're going to come over back to the uh, allies and like I said they want to play a card action and now they do want to get rid of this air transport card. So they're going to discard that. Now they have four cards in their hand. The Japanese have three. And that's going to end yet another operational sequence. And I've got to say that in playing this game, you really feel 
constrained in what you're trying to do is both the Japanese and the Allies. There's so many things I want to be able to do with the Allies, but I, I can't. I'm restricted by, you know, supply, my forces, and what cards I have in my hand. And it's, it's just as bad for the Japanese. If not worse, the Japanese have a supply problem. And I don't know how many more of those supply cards they have. So that, that's going to be an issue. Now, you can burn a card to get one supply. So there is that. So let's see. What do the Japanese want to do now? They've got some reinforcements, a couple of battle cards. And if they can gain control of Port Moresby, they'll get fit four victory points. That's going to be really hard to do with all those land areas down there. So I do think though the Japanese want to play an on-map operation. The Allies, they can't use this one or this one this turn. They can still do Coast Watchers, but they're not gonna wanna do that. They don't wanna, don't wanna do Henderson Field. So I think the Allies are going to play a card action. That's what they wanna do. So again, the Japanese will get to go first because they played an on-map operation and the player that does that gets to move first. So what do the Japanese want to do here? And I'm not sure all the ships are at a port, I think. So we're gonna have to get these ships back in, which is unfortunate because I wanted to move out some of these units. So well, let's go ahead and spend, and this should have been taken down to zero. And, and this is where the, the resources are. Uh, I wish I had more for the Japanese. So I think, I think I, I'm gonna do this correctly. I hope I am. So these units are not in port. They're actually in this sea area. And I'm going to spend a resource point, a supply source for the Japanese, and they're gonna conduct an operation from Rabal. And I think that what I can do, so I'm activating this area. I think I can activate now, I can spend, we have six supply points now. I think I can spend one supply point to activate this stack of ground units. And there, I'm gonna take three of these and I'm gonna embark them onto this, this uh, naval stack. And I think I can do that. So I'm gonna move these three. I'm also gonna take a resource, supply source marker. And now I'm looking at the rules and I can't do that because it, it says that uh, resource points must begin the operation stacked in the same port. So the only way you're going to move resource points are through, uh, through port operations. It is not allowed to disembark resource points out of a port. So that's not going to work. So I, really, I don't want to do that then. So let's put these back into here. And we're still at six supply points. I guess what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take this stack of ships. I'm going to activate it. We're going to spend, uh, that's going to cost us two supply points to activate this stack of ships. And let me check the rules real quick here. What I was looking for, and I think this is correct, so I'm going to spend these two supply points just to activate this stack of ships. Now in order to enter the port, I'm going to have to spend two more. That would take us down to two. And this stack certainly has enough movement factors to enter the port. So this, this is going to bring these ships are now actually in port with the rest of all of this. And so that's going to leave two supply points left, but I'm not going to spend those on anything. So that's going to go to zero. That will end the on-map operation for the Japanese. So now everything is inside Rabal. And that's going to end their operation, on map operation. Now we're going to go to the allies and they're going to take a card action. So they're going to, they're going to draw a card. We'll get this off the map. They will draw a card and they're hoping for reinforcements or something. And it's skip bombing. So now, now there are two of these skip bombings in their hand. And this also answers another question I had. It's like, okay, well, if I discard and I did it with the air transport, if I discard that. Are there more in there? Will it ever get to come up again? Because remember, once you discarded cards and you run out of your card deck, the game ends. So it looks like it is possible to, to have these cards come up again. Now that's bad news for the allies because now they have two of these skip bombing cards in their hand. And I really didn't want any right now because they're so dependent on that George C. Kenny card, which we do not have. So um, that was kind of a wasted operational sequence for the allies. 
So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and go through one more operational sequence, and then I'll probably stop it so that I can get feedback if you have any. So let's go ahead and do one more. So the Japanese, who only have three cards in their hand, I'm going to say they're going to want to play a card action this time. And the Allies really need to get moving on their on, on map here. Although then again, it's not like there's a time limit here, so maybe not. We have all these forces now in Port Moresby we could move. It's tempting to march a stack forward. What to do, what to do. And also bring, take a naval action and bring a stack around. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say they're going to play a card action as well. So for the Japanese, what card action do they want to take? They are going to draw a card, so let's do that. And what do they get? Sudden Death, Yamato Ambush. You can play this card when the allied player controls two, no more, no less, of the following. Hmm. So basically, Buna Lei and Guadalcanal and Bougainville. So one, two, three, four. Interesting, so you can play this card when the allied player controls two, exactly two it's saying, two of those areas. The allied player gains four victory points by this card. It seems weird this is in the Japanese hand to me. You, th you would think this would be an allied card. All right, well, that's the card they drew, and I'm gonna have to research that card a little bit further because it seems kind of odd that the Japanese would get that card. Now the Allies, they are going to discard a skip bombing card, and their, their hand is now down to four again. So we're gonna stop it here. I just wanted to do another short, se uh, short series of uh, operational sequences here, again, so that we can get a feel for what, how the game plays. If I did something wrong, let me know in the comments down below. I'm gonna research this uh, card we just drew for the Japanese, this sudden death card, to see exactly what that's gonna do. Um, so let's put that back there, and I will research that. And when we come back, we'll conduct some more operational sequences. So I'm going to stop it here. Let me know if I did everything correctly or not. That's going to be it. So as always, thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you back here next time.